Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have a big character leak for Obi-Wan Kenobi and more. Before we dive into it please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new videos. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber let's dive straight into it. So we begin with Obi-Wan Kenobi. As you guys remember during the cast announcement for the show we were told that Indira Varma is going to be in it. A lot of us speculated that she might be playing a Sarge Ventress or another antagonist to Obi-Wan. Well, we now have confirmation of the character she is going to be playing and it's going to be an Imperial officer. Some set leaks came to light the other day and one of them shows Indira Varma in the Imperial costume. So while her character is not going to be a familiar force wielder, this photo does signal some great news for the plot of the show. A lot of speculation has been around the idea of having two simultaneous plots, one of which focuses on Obi-Wan's newfound life in exile on Tatooine and the other on Vader's new life as the executor for Palpatine's empire. It's believed that these two plot threads will come together near the end of the show and we could have a massive face-off. Indira Varma's character will presumably be an officer working under Darth Vader and her role in the show might be more important than we think. Since it's now confirmed that we are getting an Imperial plot in the show, we have to ask the question of whether or not we'll see the return of Palpatine for the series, or even someone like Grand Moff Tarkin. If Tarkin does appear, the Bad Batch acts as a precursor to his arc in the Kenobi series. And once again, it's likely that he's going to be CGI, like we saw him in Rogue One. So now, my dear Megalorians, we're going to move on and talk about Mace Windu, because once again, Samuel L. Jackson has teased a return to the Star Wars franchise. In case you're not aware, I've made quite a lot of videos on the possibility of Mace returning, and my money is on the fact that he could make an appearance in the Book of Boba Fett. If he returns in the Book of Boba, he is going to be an old man, very much changed compared to when we saw him in Revenge of the Sith. Now look, I'm very aware of the fact that in my own audience I have very split opinions on this. A lot of you think that he died in Revenge of the Sith, but as Samuel L. Jackson and George Lucas have said, it's very likely that Mace did not die when he fell out the Coruscant window. So let's see what Samuel L. Jackson has shared this time. The article starts by saying Hollywood legend Samuel L. Jackson has been involved in some big movie franchises. From his ongoing role as Nick Fury in the MCU to his appearances as Mace Windu in the prequels, Jackson certainly has no lack of experience in the movie industry. He's also a big Star Wars fan in his own right, and the actor recently made his opinion about a key scene in Attack of the Clones very clear on social media. Wearing a shirt that reads, check out the big brain on Django, he wrote literally, Mandalorian my ass. If you look closely, you'll see him change his mind, and one of the hashtags he uses is Mace Ain't Done. Now back on May the 4th and a week later on Instagram, he also posted a similar caption with the hashtag Mace Lives, so it's very clear he's got Mace Windu on his mind recently, and he seems to be increasingly vocal about it, which is really exciting if you're in the camp that Mace is coming back. The actor's t-shirt was of course referencing a line from his character Jules Winfield in the hit movie Pulp Fiction. But in this case, Jackson's caption refers to Django Fett's death scene in episode 2, and fans are divided on what exactly happened when Boba Fett's father died in front of him. Some people believe that the Mandalorian bounty hunter tried to fire up his jetpack in order to escape Windu, but many hold the very strong opinion that the clone trooper template stood his ground until Mace Windu decapitated him. Samuel L. Jackson clearly falls into the former category and apparently has very little respect for Django Fett. Now evidently guys, when the article says that, they're obviously making a joke. It goes on to say perhaps the most intriguing part of Jackson's post is the hashtag Mace Ain't Done. As you're probably all aware, rumours have long run rampant that Mace Windu will make his return at some point. Even the Star Wars creator himself says that Windu survived his battle with Sheev Palpatine. Now while there are many ways in which Mace Windu could return to Star Wars, I think the most likely option is that he's going to return in the Book of Boba Fett, but I could be wrong. I've also heard many opinions that Mace Windu is the one who saved Grogu from Order 66. I guess time will tell, but I do believe that Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni want to tell that story. But what do you guys think? Do you think we'll see Mace Windu again in Star Wars, or do you think he died at the end of Episode 3? I've made an entire theory video about how I think Mace is going to return, so do check that out. In theory, there are other good places that he could return to Star Wars, for example in The Bad Batch, because we're just after Order 66, but it would be much more powerful to see him in live action. Again, he could return in things like The Mandalorian or Ahsoka, but The Book of Boba Fett is perfect and very poetic. Boba Fett watched Mace Windu kill his father and now he's a grown-up bounty hunter with a whole lot of experience under his belt. If he finds an old Mace Windu, that confrontation would be absolutely priceless. 
So now, my dear friends, we're going to be talking about The Bad Batch, specifically Michelle Ang, who voices Omega. In a recent interview, Michelle Ang admits that she auditioned for The Last Jedi, more specifically for a role as one of the Tico sisters, although we're not sure which one. It could have been Paige or it could have been Rose. So let's take a good gander at this article. In the years since Disney purchased Lucasfilm, the Star Wars franchise has expanded in a massive way and required a number of performers to get involved. In light of this, Michelle Ang admits that before playing the role of Omega, in The Bad Batch, she auditioned for Star Wars Episode 8. While the actress did not confirm the role she auditioned for, many people believe it was for one of the Tico sisters. In her own words, she says, this is really moving for me to be part of Star Wars. But the feeling of losing out to Star Wars The Last Jedi was really huge and quite heartbreaking. So it's quite nice to have it come full circle with The Bad Batch. While The Last Jedi was shrouded in secrecy in the audition process, the same applies to The Bad Batch. Michelle Ang is not the only one who was kept in the dark about a Star Wars opportunity, with Kelly Marie recently detailing how secret her own audition for Rose Tico was. And look guys, finding out that Michelle Ang did not get the role for Rose Tico in episode 8 makes me really happy she finally got to be a part of the Star Wars family in The Bad Batch. And I'm sure we can all agree that she's been absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of Omega, I made a theory video yesterday which explains why she does not have an inhibitor chip. So do check that out if you are interested. We have five days until episode eight drops and I cannot wait. We're now officially at the halfway point of season one and things are really starting to get intense. Now, just to conclude guys, I wanted to give you an update on the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga game. As you all know, it's been delayed so much, but unfortunately we have some more bad news. A recent report states that they've run into some some notable development issues and this is very likely for being so ambitious with what they want the game to be. So it doesn't look like we're going to be getting the game anytime soon. I know that a lot of you are big Lego Star Wars fans, myself included, so this comes as such a shame for the most anticipated Lego game. But that's the way things are I'm afraid but we do have some good news so I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and also be sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. We currently have five tiers so it's really up to you how much you want to pledge and on patreon you have access to content that's not found here on youtube and that includes my megasodes forgotten characters star wars planets exclusive star wars explained videos and much much more so do check that out otherwise i'm star wars meg and i'm wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day no matter where you dwell in the galaxy have a good one